What's going on? It's Coach Williams, and I'm back for another breakdown. So, as you all know, it's wild card weekend in the NFL, playoff games are happening, and you know I had to come in with a breakdown. So, I've seen a lot of people talking about how the Bengals are, you know, one of the surprise teams this year, and that, you know, they got a really good chance of, you know, making some waves and stuff like that. And I say they are a really damn good team, but they caught a really tough draw in having to play the Raiders again. Now, a lot of people will look at the game that they played earlier in the year and they'll go, oh, well, they crushed the Raiders, so they're just going to beat them again. People forget the score in that game late in the third quarter or in the fourth quarter, it was 16 to 13. It was a tight, close game. And it's because the Raiders match up really well with the Bengals, right? The strength of the Raiders team is their front four, right? They can get after the quarterback. If you were watching Sunday Night Football against the uh, Chargers last week, they were getting after Herbert, right? The Bengals' weakness is these guys right here, their offensive line. They are not good in pass protection. They do have the explosive players, but you have to get the ball into those guys' hands first. Anyone that's been involved with football for any portion of their life knows the game ends up one in the trenches. And if you've got a weakness in the trenches, it gets amplified and exposed when you're playing in big, meaningful games. So we're going to break down a couple of plays from this game to be able to see why this is such a tough matchup for the Bengals. Okay. So Burrow's been sacked over 50 times this year, right? That's not good. <laughs> That's a really bad number. And we know that Yannick Ngakwe and Max Crosby, they're relentless in their pass rush. So we're going to break down this play right here. All right, I believe this is 10 personnel, uh, four wide receivers out here, one running back, okay? And anyone that watches the Raiders knows or knows their coaching staff, like their, their defensive coordinator is Gus Bradley. It is, you know, the Seattle scheme stuff. So, you know, single high safety looks, a lot of mixing of cover three, cover one, different coverages like that. I believe this coverage that the Raiders are playing here is cover one robber. So they're going to have this guy drop down, right? This safety is going to drop down. And all these guys underneath are in man-to-man -man coverage. If you get any kind of crosser, he's going to steal the crosser, right? So as we watch the play, right, you get two crossers. OK, so you get a shallow crosser and you get a deeper crosser. OK, he reads it and sees the shallow crosser and decides to steal that guy. Right. But the linebacker thinks that he's going to get helped out with his guy. So he falls off him. So this guy's wide open right here. But as we can see, the pocket here is all muddy. So we can go back to the beginning of the play and we can see here. Right now, if you know Joe Burrow and you're good at evaluating quarterbacks, you know that he his players that he compares very closely to are guys like, uh, you know, Drew Brees, Matt Ryan, Mac Jones, you know, Tom Brady. Right. He's very similar to those guys. He can process the defense. Right. When he has the time, he can process the defense, figure out what they're trying to do, find the weakness in the defense and get the ball there quickly. But you need pass protection to be able to do that. And you need the center of your pass protection to be good because he likes to step up and climb the pocket. As we can see here, he's attempting to step up and climb the pocket, but it's all muddy in here, right? The tackles don't do a bad job, but he has nowhere to step up, which causes him to pause. And then Yannick Ngakwe and Max Crosby two relentless pass rushers meet at him, ball comes flying out, fumble, okay? So the Raiders end up returning this one uh, deep into the red zone, right? So if we go and look at it from the tight, right? The key, one of the keys to this too, is that it's a four-man rush. They don't have to send any extra resources and keep all their guys back and be able to cover, right? So again, like we said, right? Middle of the pocket collapses. Burrow's see him trying to climb the pocket and step up. Can't do it. Sacked, right? So, and like we talked about earlier, he has a guy wide open that he could have been able to get the ball to because coverage busts. He's wide open. Can't get the ball there, right? So we'll fast forward 
to later in the game, okay? And I think this is a key critical play to understand too, okay? So like we just talked about, Seattle scheme, right? Single high safety stuff, a lot of cover one, a lot of cover three. But since they have these four guys that can get after the quarterback, right? They can do a little bit more, you know, too high stuff, right? They can do some different coverages. They're going to do a coverage on this play that we've talked about in some past videos, right? Brackets, okay? So you got T. Higgins down here, and you got Jamar Chase here, okay? So we'll watch. Watch Jamar Chase, right? He releases, gets upfield, bracketed, right? We got two guys on him, right? Now we can go back down to the bottom of the screen and look at Higgins. He releases inside, right? That inside release gives the safety the ability to bracket him, right? So we've got bracket coverage here. Both of the two most explosive receivers are double covered. Burrow is not a guy that's going to throw into double coverage like that, right? Right? He's going to try to read out the defense, try to find out where it's weak and get the ball there. But this four-man rush again from the Raiders is relentless. Again, there's nowhere in the middle of the pocket to step up to, right? And this also creates another thing that you can notice here if you watch closely, right? So we got Jonathan Abrams down here. He's going to be covering this tight end, right? So it's a four-man rush, but he sees that the tight end stays in to chip. So he chooses, right? This is not in the defense. I'm sure that they do not say that he's allowed to do this, but he just makes an instinctive football play that this tackle knows he's not coming. He knows he's got help, so he's going to go out there and try to get to him. Goes, attacks the quarterback, turns into a five-man rush, and he gets a sack, right? But Burrow doesn't have enough time to see, right? If he had enough time to be able to step up in the pocket, he would have been able to see that he had this little outlet here and he's got a guy wide open, right? So, and we can see it from the tight again, right? Watch. So, all right, we got three to a side, four man pass rush, right? Burrow is trying to step up here, right? He's trying to step up, but the middle of the pocket collapses. He's got nowhere to go and he ends up getting sacked. And we can see his eyes are on Chase. He wants to throw the ball to Chase, but he knows, ah, I can't throw into double coverage like that. And that split second, that little bit of time, that's all the Raiders pass rush needs. So, you know, I think that this matchup between the Bengals and the Raiders, right, the Bengals are definitely a better team. But once you get to the higher levels of football, what ends up mattering is the matchup how do teams match up against each other? We've seen the, the Jaguars beat the Bills and the Colts, two teams that they are absolutely not better than, but they just matched up really well against them, right? Once you get into the playoffs, the matchups become even more important. So that's the video for today, right? And you know, as the playoffs go on, I'm sure that there will be more videos for me to break down and talk to you about and you know, talk about the matchups. And we can find little interesting little nuggets that we can figure out and give us insight into the game. So, as always, it's Coach Williams, Ball Hawks, we fly. I'm out. Peace. <laughs>